With his stomach churning almost as fast as his race car, Tony Stewart battled through the 600 miles at Charlotte in 1999. He started feeling dizzy. He used the headrest to prop up his helmet as his neck muscles no longer could perform the job. After he climbed from his car, Medic strapped Stewart to a gurney. Stewart doesn't necessarily love those images. He just finished fourth in his first 600, a result that required racing at an incredibly high level. But those images show just how much it takes to attempt to race 1,100 miles in one day in two of the biggest, most celebrated racing events in the world, the Indianapolis 500 and what's known as the World 600. Kyle Larson hopes to add his name to the list as the fifth driver to race both in one day as the generational talent tries to complete all 1,100 miles on Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. For the record, Stewart drove only 1,090 miles that day in 1999 as he finished four laps down in ninth at Indianapolis. And for the record, as he stayed in his autobiography, True Speed, he only ate some mini bagels in the morning and a nutritional bar and drank an electrolyte drink on his way from Indianapolis to Charlotte. Stewart would accomplish the full 1,100 miles two years later, and he remains the only driver to run the full distance of both races on the same day. Three other drivers started both races in the same day a combined five times. Wait, scratch that. To call these drivers others doesn't do them justice. If you kids don't know, fans in history recognize all of them as some of the most versatile racers who have full respect of their fellow competitors. I appreciate things that come with unique moments in racing and doing the double to me was always intriguing to watch because that's what you do. Uh, you, you watch the F1 race, you watch the IndyCar race, and then you go, you would go race yourself on, on the NASCAR side. So, but the double is, it's, it's gonna be a great time watching Kyle Larson do it. The double is a relatively new phenomenon over the last 30 years. The Indianapolis 500 had run on Saturdays back in the day until 1974, so drivers had raced both events the same weekend or sometimes even a week apart, depending on scheduling. Recent NASCAR Hall of Fame inductee Donnie Allison was one of them. He finished fourth in the 1970 Indianapolis 500 and won the 600 in the same week. And he also finished sixth in the 500 and then second in the 600 on back-to-back -back days in 1971. Okay, I had a hectic two months uh, both years I ran because I ran the soccer at Talladega and at Darlington that same month, plus all the practice and qualifying in Indy. So I was busy and I didn't have a jet either. <laughs> After nearly two decades of the races overlapping, the double turned into a possibility when Charlotte Motor Speedway added lights in 1992, allowing the 600 mile race to start late enough that doing both races on the same day, while not easy at all, could be achieved with meticulous planning, mistake-free logistics, and months of preparation. The first to try, a journeyman IndyCar driver with a famous last name in John Andretti. He had lost his full-time IndyCar ride after 1992, and he spent 1993 dabbling in various racing series, even going drag racing. He landed a full cup ride for 1994, but funding didn't materialize, and the Billy Hagen team struggled as the season progressed. Charlotte Motor Speedway President Humpy Wheeler approached Andretti with the idea to run both in one day, and Andretti jumped at the chance. He convinced A.J. Foyt to field a car for him in the Indy 500. That turned into a long two weeks for Andretti as he put his car in the Indy 500 on the first day of qualifying, a day prior to racing cup, all the way out at Sonoma in California. On the Wednesday following Sonoma, a strong 600 qualifying effort guaranteed him a spot in the 600 field. Andretti, in his book Racer, said he had to coordinate 11 flights back and forth to Indianapolis during the Sonoma and Charlotte race weekends. When John Andretti first announced he was going to do the Memorial Day double, People thought that was, was really odd and had little chance of success. That's a lot of racing. That's a lot of traveling. And then that's a whole lot of racing uh, all in one day. And there was kind of a feeling throughout the press box that it was Andretti's folly. And he did it successfully. Andretti notes in his book that he didn't even make any money off of doing the double, and in fact, pretty much drove for free in the cup car for the cash-strapped team. He finished four laps down in 10th at Indianapolis and immediately got a golf cart ride to take him outside the track. Yes, at that time, the track didn't even allow a driver helicopter in the infield. 
Andretti took that helicopter to an awaiting plane and then flew to North Carolina. He knew about nutrition and fluids and had a nurse to administer IVs while he ate assorted fruits and vegetables during the 50-minute flight. He arrived at the track in a helicopter, landing in the Charlotte infield with little time to spare. Andretti didn't finish the 600 as a crash early in the race damaged his car, and after 220 laps, a broken crankshaft ended his day. He would never try the double again. Cup car owners didn't want to risk a driver not arriving in time for the start of the 600. That driver to do it needed to have clout, and Tony Stewart was the one. Just how badly did Tony Stewart want to win the Indianapolis 500? Well, do you kids know they had to go to court to do the double? He wanted to race the 500 for Larry Curry, but home improvement store owner John Menard controlled his IndyCar rights unless his NASCAR contract posed a conflict. But well, I would say that Home Depot sponsoring his Gibbs car and NASCAR would conflict with Menard's, and despite Menard's legal challenge, Stewart prevailed. And he not only achieved the feat as the first driver to complete both races in the same day, he nearly won one of them. After finishing ninth at the 1999 Indianapolis 500, Stewart found himself in contention to win the 600. As he put it in his book, quote, the car was perfect, unfortunately I wasn't. The fact the grueling double tax Stewart surprised no one. Even the best of athletes in the bestest shape would feel the rigors of driving both races in one day and a cup car over 600 miles gets notoriously hot, and Stewart suffered from claustrophobia when overheated. At Indy, you wake up at, I remember waking up at 4.30 in the morning, everything starts so early there, so it's it's not like you get a, a big night of rest. I mean, you wake up at 4.30, you're at the track at probably 6.30. Um, so, you know, you think about it, from 6.30 until midnight of the of the Coke 600, you're, you're at the racetrack. Just physically, mentally, keeping your body prepared, keeping hydrated, Mentally, especially as you get through the Coke 600, I remember Tony talking about how, you know, whatever it was, the last 100, 150 miles of the Coke 600, the line just became blurry just because you're exhausted mentally. When Stewart attempted another double two years later, a Joe Gibbs trainer helped him with his nutrition and getting physically fit to do both events. As he moved between the cities, he could feel the benefits of that preparation. At Indy, his leg actually fell asleep because they didn't have him in the best seating position for the race. It also rained and he almost had to leave Indy early, but the delay ended up short enough for him to stay and he finished sixth. He landed at the Charlotte track just in time to walk to his car. I feel great. Uh, the trainer did a great job. Al and the doctor, they got plenty of fluids in me. And even as much as I fought and didn't want the needle, they got it in me, so uh, we feel good, we're ready to go. Stewart spun out on lap two of the 600, leading some to think he lacked focus. He rallied to finish third, and he took great joy that he felt well enough to do an interview, as some had opined that he posed a danger to the rest of the field if he couldn't physically handle the grueling day. You know, I had two doctors on the plane that took real good care of me, so, uh, you, know, I, you know, I don't know how you can... For those people that had any doubts and thought that I was putting everybody in danger, you're a bunch of idiots because I was the fastest car on the racetrack at the end, so uh, maybe you ought to become doctors before you start writing in the newspapers talking about how dangerous drivers are for running 1,100 miles in a day. Both Stewart and Andretti had deep roots in Indianapolis, and you can't discount that when talking about what doing the double means to the Indianapolis fan base. Because speaking from the heart, as someone who moved to Indy at age 10, there are two things that exist that every kid in Indy wants a basketball hoop in the backyard, and something associated with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, whether that be a checkered flag or just even a memory of the race or even a practice session. It means an awful lot to this community when that happens. Tony Stewart is, is, is a favorite son of, especially of racing fans in Indiana, so having him do it was, uh, was exciting. Robbie Gordon attempted the double five times, but started both races in one day on just two occasions. He first tried it in 1997, and the Indy 500 got rained out. In 2000, a rain-delayed Indy 500 resulted in his arriving in Charlotte after a couple hundred laps. In 2002 and 2003, he did start both races in the same day, completing the 2002 Indy 500 in eighth, all the while fighting off cramps, and then finishing a lap down in 16th in the 600. The following year, a gearbox failure ended his 500 after 169 of the 200 laps, and then he finished 17th in a rain-shortened 600. In 2004, he had to leave a rainy Indy early to make it to Charlotte in time. I thought that was really cool, you know? I mean, I remember being uh, a part of that and watching it and, and being at the condo at Charlotte Motor Speedway, seeing him chop her in. Um, my current doctor, uh, 
is also the doctor that Ravi used. So, I mean, he went with him, and I remember talking about having to give him an IV on the helicopter, the plane ride from Indy over, and just what all went, to, went into it. Stuart, Gordon, and Andretti all shared one thing in common. Their racing roots came in IndyCar. The most recent driver who did the double had his roots firmly entrenched in NASCAR. Kurt Busch had no IndyCar experience when he decided he would do the double in 2014. Dubbed the outlaw at the time, Bush went out to prove he could achieve the ultimate racing marathon. The, the one thing that sticks out to me, and, and really with Kurt, he put a lot of time in physically to, to get himself prepared and, and do what, what he needed to do to, to be uh, physically ready, but there's just a lot of practice so, you know, that, that happens at Indianapolis and, and to be prepared for the race. and. Um, the cars just are so drastically different in, in how you approach them and the things that you do. I mean, you still study and, and, and simulate and, and do all the things that you would do on the same on both cars, but uh, what, what you're trying to accomplish in the driving style of, of how you drive the cars is drastically different from, from one to the other. Like Tony Stewart did in his first double attempt, Bush crashed his car in practice at Indianapolis. He had to learn the line, the point of no return in an Indy car and boy, did he find it. But Bush qualified 12th and the race went smooth. He finished sixth and made it to Charlotte with plenty of time to spare. His Charlotte race though ended early when his engine expired 406 miles into the event. <laughs> that is what it has come down to. These drivers doing the double outlast the cars themselves. For the stock car drivers, the speed of an Indy car dwarfs anything else they have wheeled on an oval. 220 on paper, is like crazy fast and, and obviously it is but like when you're out there by yourself and you know, this track is so smooth it doesn't feel like you're going 220 or it doesn't feel any different than going like 195 at daytona i did look at the wall one time thinking like man that would really hurt <laughs> if i if i hit it so things are obviously happening quickly larson will have one benefit the other drivers didn't all of them had to start the 600 from the rear of the field because they missed the pre-race drivers meeting in Charlotte. Larson likely won't have to do that as NASCAR will allow him to skip the meeting, which has become more of a ceremonial event as a meet and greet in the post-COVID era. Keeping the starting position also means more now that drivers earn stage points every 100 laps. This is such a huge race to myself and, and my family and, and so many people that yeah, I'm just glad I get to do it. All eyes will focus on Larson before, during, and after each of those races on Memorial Day weekend, especially at Indianapolis, where he tries to win arguably the biggest race in motorsports. Few would discount the possibility, now not a great possibility, but it's there for him to win both races in one day. Of course, just completing both in one day will rate as a huge feat that few racers ever have the opportunity to accomplish. Maybe it's racing's version of the EGOT that Elton John just got. You know, the Emmy, the Grammy, the Oscar, and the Tony. Getting to race in two really huge races on Memorial Day in front of two of the biggest crowds of the year. That is a very short, special group of drivers right there. Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.